you are now looking at a photograph taken by the largest camera in human history. And if that sounds like an overstatement, consider this. To see this single image in its full resolution, you would need more than 300 high-definition televisions arranged in a giant wall. But it isn't the scale that leaves me speechless. It's the depth. It's the feeling that we have just switched on a new kind of light in a universe we thought we knew. A light that sees not just space, but time itself. What you see here isn't just a picture. It is the beginning of a movie, 10 years long, starring the entire southern sky. And it's a movie that might just rewrite the story of everything, from the tiniest rock in our solar system to the very fabric of space-time. For decades, we have built our temples to the stars in the most remote, pristine corners of our world. This one is no different. Perched 2,700 meters above sea level on Cerro Pachon, a desolate peak in the Chilean Andes, sits the Vera C. Rubin Observatory. This is the Atacama Desert, one of the driest places on Earth. Here, the air is thin, stable, and so free of moisture that it feels like it's from another planet. There are no city lights to wash out the starlight, no atmospheric turbulence to make it shimmer. It's a place where the veil between Earth and the cosmos is at its thinnest, a perfect window. And inside that gleaming white dome, which silently rotates against the star-dusted sky, is the reason we are here. A marvel of engineering called the Legacy Survey of Space and Time Camera, or LSST. To call it a camera feels inadequate. It is a three-ton instrument the size of a small car, an intricate assembly of glass, steel, and silicon built with a precision that borders on the fanatical. Its eye is a colossal lens, one and a half meters across, the largest ever made for this purpose, itself a world record holder. But its heart, its heart is a digital sensor unlike any other circular plane, two feet wide, paved with 189 advanced sensors, or CCDs. Each one is a tiny slab of silicon that converts particles of light into a whisper of electricity. The gap between them is less than the width of a human hair. To capture the faint, ancient light from the edge of the universe, this priceless mosaic must be kept in a vacuum chamber and cryogenically cooled to minus 100 degrees Celsius. At this frigid temperature, the random thermal energy that creates digital noise in any normal camera simply freezes into silence. It's this profound quiet that allows the camera to hear the faintest whispers of the cosmos. The result is a sensitivity so extreme it could detect a golf ball from 25 kilometers away or a candle flame from thousands. This 3.2 gigapixel sensor is our new window onto the void. And the camera does not work alone. It is the final destination for light that has gone on a spectacular journey. High above it in the telescope structure hangs a colossal 8.4 meter primary mirror, a vast curved surface designed as a light bucket to catch photons that have been traveling for billions of years. From there, the light is focused up to a 3.4 meter secondary mirror, then back down to a 5 meter tertiary mirror nestled within the primary before finally entering the camera. It's a three-mirror optical design of breathtaking complexity, all to deliver the widest, sharpest possible view of the sky. Just before hitting the sensors, the light passes through one of six giant filters, from ultraviolet to near-infrared, allowing the observatory to see the universe in a multitude of colors, revealing different physical processes. This entire three-ton camera and filter assembly slides into place with millimeter precision. It's not just looking at the sky, it's dissecting it. But what makes Rubin truly revolutionary isn't just what it sees, but how it sees. It isn't taking long, patient exposures of one tiny patch of sky, like Hubble or Webb. It's a brute force approach, a relentless survey machine. The entire massive telescope, weighing hundreds of tons, can swing across the sky and settle on a new position in just five seconds. 
Every 30 seconds, it takes a vast 15-second snapshot, then moves, then takes another. In just three nights, it will have scanned the entire visible southern sky, and then it will do it again, and again, and again for a decade, visiting every patch of sky nearly a thousand times. This creates an unimaginably vast database of the cosmos. Every single night, this observatory will generate 20 terabytes of data. Let me put that in perspective. That is the equivalent of streaming 5,000 high-definition movies every night. It's more information in a single evening than the Hubble Space Telescope has produced in its entire 30-plus years of operation. The final data archive will be over 150 petabytes, an amount of information comparable to all the written works of humankind throughout all of history. No team of astronomers could ever hope to analyze this alone. It's an ocean of data so vast it can only be navigated by sophisticated artificial intelligence and machine learning algorithms searching for patterns, anomalies, and discoveries. The real magic is what this cadence allows us to do. The observatory's primary technique is something called difference imaging. Imagine you take a picture of a city street at night. An hour later, you take the exact same picture. If you digitally subtract the first image from the second, what's left? Only the things that have changed. A car that moved. A light that turned on. A person walking. Rubin does this for the entire universe. It takes an image, waits a few days, takes another, and subtracts. Left behind is the cosmos in motion. An asteroid streaking across the field of view. A star that has exploded into a supernova. A star that has vanished, perhaps collapsing directly into a black hole. For the first time, we aren't just taking static portraits of the universe. We are watching it breathe. We are witnessing cosmic history as it happens. Which brings us back to this, the very first light. This is a region of the Virgo cluster of galaxies, our closest large galactic neighborhood, a sprawling metropolis of thousands of galaxies bound together by gravity. It looks like a scatter of jewels on black velvet, but each point of light, each smudge, is an entire galaxy, home to hundreds of billions of stars and planets. That giant glowing orb near the center is Messier 49, a ghostly elliptical galaxy, an ancient city of stars that has long since stopped giving birth to new ones, its smooth, featureless glow a sign of old age. And over here, this breathtaking spiral is Messier 61. Even from 60 million light years away, Rubin's camera resolves its majestic pinwheeling arms, traced with the brilliant blue light of hot young stars and the telltale pink glow of hydrogen gas in stellar nurseries. We can see tangled knots of galaxies interacting, their gravitational fields locked in a cosmic dance of destruction and creation that will unfold over millions of years. But the real astonishment comes from leaning in closer. Scattered across the frame are faint, almost imperceptible streaks. These are asteroids from our own solar system, more than 2,100 of them, discovered in this image alone, their paths traced between exposures. Most have never been seen by human eyes before, and now look deeper into the background. See those tiny reddish smudges, almost lost in the noise? Those aren't stars. They are entire galaxies, billions of light years away. Their light appears red, not because they are inherently red, but because it has been stretched to longer wavelengths by the expansion of the universe itself during its unimaginably long journey to us. It is the fingerprint of cosmic expansion, a phenomenon called redshift. We are looking back in time, seeing light that is older than our own planet. We are seeing the ghost of a universe that no longer exists. All of this is captured with a clarity that is simply staggering, framed by the razor-sharp diffraction spikes of foreground stars from our own Milky Way, an optical artifact that is a signature of the telescope's unique power. It makes you wonder, all this time, these galaxies have been there. These asteroids have been silently tumbling through space, this ancient light has been racing towards us, we were just blind to it. 
What else have we been missing simply because we lacked the eyes to see? This single picture is a testament to the four great quests the observatory is undertaking. First, it will probe the two greatest mysteries in physics, dark matter and dark energy. By measuring the precise shapes of billions of galaxies, Rubin will map out how their light is subtly distorted by the gravity of things we cannot see. It's as if we're looking at the cosmos through a vast, lumpy, invisible pane of glass. By mapping the distortions, we can map the lumps in the glass. This will allow us to create a vast, three-dimensional shadow map of the dark matter scaffolding that holds the universe together. And by watching how galaxies cluster over time, it will track the influence of dark energy, the strange repulsive force that is accelerating the expansion of the cosmos. Second, it will complete a census of our own solar system. It will identify millions of asteroids and comets charting their orbits with incredible precision and flagging any that might pose a threat to Earth, providing decades of warning. It will explore the frigid outer reaches of our solar system, the Kuiper Belt, searching for new dwarf planets, and just maybe, finally revealing the location of the hypothetical Planet Nine, a ghost planet whose presence is only inferred by the strange orbits of distant ice worlds. It will survey the dynamic, changing sky. By taking a new picture every few days, it will create a real-time alert system for the heavens, catching thousands of supernovae each year, many within hours of their explosion. It will witness kilonovae, the explosive mergers of neutron stars that forge the universe's gold and platinum. It will see stars torn apart by the gravity of supermassive black holes, it will discover entirely new types of cosmic events that we can't even predict yet. And fourth, by cataloging billions of stars within our own Milky Way, it will act as a stellar archaeologist. It will trace the faint streams of stars left behind by smaller galaxies that our own has cannibalized over billions of years. Like a cosmic forensic scientist, it will sift through these stellar clues to piece together the violent history of how our galactic home was built. It is no accident that this observatory is named after Vera Rubin. She was a titan of astronomy, a brilliant and tenacious scientist who, in the 1970s, studied how galaxies rotate, outer edges moving slower than those at the center. But that's not what she found. Instead, the outer stars were moving just as fast, the only way to explain this was if galaxies were embedded in a massive, invisible halo of something, some kind of dark matter. It was a revolutionary discovery. Vera Rubin fought skepticism her entire career, not just for her science, but for her place as a woman in a field that actively tried to exclude her. She famously said, In a spiral galaxy, the ratio of dark to light matter is about a factor of 10. That's probably a good number for the ratio of our ignorance to knowledge. The observatory that now bears her name is a monument to her legacy, a machine designed to map the very darkness she first revealed to us, and to, perhaps, finally reduce that ratio of ignorance. For centuries, we've captured still portraits of the cosmos, beautiful, serene, but frozen in time. That era is over. Today, we begin filming the greatest movie ever made, the story of the universe, unfolding in real time, frame by painstaking frame. This first image is just the opening shot. The script is unwritten. What unseen forces are still waiting in the wings? What new characters, planets, stars, even new laws of physics are about to make their entrance on this cosmic stage? We don't know, and that is the most exciting part. All we can do is watch.